Medieval is an action-adventure hack and slash video game developed by SCE Cambridge Studio and published by Sony Computer Entertainment for the PlayStation. The game is set in the medieval kingdom of Gallomere and centers around the charlatan protagonist, Sir Daniel Fortesque, as he makes an attempt to stop antagonist Zorak's invasion of the kingdom whilst simultaneously redeeming himself. Development began in 1995 at Millennium Interactive in Cambridge under the working title of Dead Man Dan. The visuals are heavily influenced by Tim Burton's The Nightmare Before Christmas. Originally conceived as an arcade-style shooter for platforms such as Windows and the Sega Saturn, Sony's purchase of SCE Cambridge Studio evolved the game into a PlayStation title. The game received mostly positive praise from critics upon release, with praise including its blend of Halloween-themed visuals, but was criticized for its controls and cumbersome camera work. It was released in Europe and North America in 1998, and in Japan in 1999. It was also re-released on the PlayStation Network in 2007. It was followed by a sequel, Medieval 2, in 2000, and a PlayStation Portable remake in 2005 titled Medieval, Resurrection. At PlayStation Experience 2017, a remake for PlayStation 4 was announced. A trailer for the remake was released on October 31, 2018 with a release of the game in 2019. Gameplay The game takes place across a variety of levels, many of which require certain objectives to be performed to progress. Sir Daniel Fortesque can use a variety of weapons, consisting of close-range weapons such as swords and clubs to long-range weapons such as crossbows. Many can be charged for a powerful attack and some, such as the club, can be used to access areas that are otherwise inaccessible. When not possessing any items, Dan is able to rip his arm off and use it for both melee and ranged attacks. Dan can equip a shield alongside weapons for defense, though they have a limited amount of strength and are best used sparingly. Throughout the game, Dan can visit gargoyle heads of two varieties, green ones offer Dan information while blue ones allow Dan to buy services or ammunition by using the treasures he finds. Dan's health is determined by a health bar, which reduces when Dan is hit. It will deplete completely if Dan drowns or falls from a great height. If Dan runs out of health, the game will end. Dan can extend his maximum health by collecting life bottles, which will automatically refill his health bar if it drops to zero. Also hidden throughout the game are life vials and life fountains that replenish Dan's health and fill any empty life bottles Dan has. In each level, there is a hidden chalice of souls which can be collected if the player dispatches enough enemies some chalices are awarded via other means. If the player clears a level with a chalice in hand, Dan is warped to the Hall of Heroes, where he can speak to a hero who will give him rewards, such as weapons. If the player finishes the game with all the chalices, the true ending is revealed. Plot An evil sorcerer named Zarak plotted to take over the kingdom of Galomir with his undead army. It is told in legend that the champion, Sir Daniel Fortesque, led the king of Galomir's army to victory and managed to kill Zarak before he succumbed to his mortal wounds. In reality however, Dan was in fact struck down by the first arrow fired in the battle, with the king choosing to cover it up and declare Dan a hero. Zarak, meanwhile, went into hiding. One hundred years later, Zarak reappears, casting a spell over Galomir to awaken his undead army and steal the souls of the living. However, in the process, he unwittingly revives the corpse of Dan, who has over time become a skeletal corpse, missing his jaw and the eye he lost in the Battle of Galomir. Having been unable to ascend to the fabled Hall of Heroes, Dan uses this opportunity to defeat Zarak, save Galomir and earn his place as a true hero. As Dan travels across Galomir, fighting his way through Zarak's hordes and confronting all manner of beasts, he soon arrives at Zarak's lair, fighting off Zarak's skeletal warriors using the souls of his old allies retrieved by collecting the chalices. After also managing to defeat Zarak's champion, Lord Kardak, Zarak turns into a powerful monster, but Dan manages to defeat him. As Zarak uses his last breath to cause his lair to collapse in an attempt to take Dan with him, Dan escapes and Zarak's magical influence over the land is thwarted, restoring the souls back to the living and putting the dead back to rest. With the magic cast on him also wearing off as a result, Dan returns to his burial chamber where he once again enters eternal slumber. 
If the player has managed to collect all the chalices, Dan will ascend to the Hall of Heroes, where he is hailed as the rightful hero of Galomir. Topic: <laughs> Development. Development of Medieval begun in late 1995 at independent developer Millennium Interactive in Cambridge. Chris Sorrell, previously known for the James Pond series of games, created the original concept for Medieval and served as the game's creative director. Sorrell joined Millennium, with whom he had been working with for a while, after completing James Pond 3. When asked what he wanted to do, he said he wanted to work with someone on the visual side. Jason Wilson, who would be the designer and a writer for the game, met up with Sorrell and began working on Medieval. According to Sorrell, the first design proposal for the game had the working title Dead Man Dan and described a game that was initially a fusion of Capcom's Ghost and Goblins combined with the art style of Tim Burton's The Nightmare Before Christmas. As development progressed, lead artist Wilson pushed the game into more of a Zelda role playing game influenced direction as opposed to the original arcade style concept. Looking to attract a major publishing deal, Millennium Interactive initially began working on multiple platforms including Windows and the Sega Saturn before giving Sony of Europe a working demo of the game. Impressed by the progress, Sony signed Medieval to be an exclusive PlayStation game and commissioned SCE Cambridge Studio as Sony's second studio in the United Kingdom, after Psygnosis. During the production of the demo, there was a programmer for each platform. Millennium were having financial difficulties and wanted to secure a publisher quickly. Sega and Microsoft were also interested in the game. SCE Cambridge wanted the game to possess a unique lead character, thus Sorrell worked with script Dr. Martin Pond whilst creating an expansive backstory for the lead protagonist, Sir Daniel Fortesque. Pond came up with the idea that Sir Daniel could have been a pompous failure in life whose reincarnation was his one shot at redemption. This idea, along with the player character's unusual appearance, turned appealing to some sectors of the gaming community, as lead designer Wilson later recalled that female gamers considered Sir Daniel to be endearing, and was considered a sex symbol in France. Sony's acquisition of SCE Cambridge, which occurred within six months of Sony agreeing to publish the game, helped ease financial strain on the project, but did not assist the studio's inexperience with making 3D games. The takeover was also quite intimidating to Sorrell and Wilson, who had not held conferences. Sorrell stated the concept of conferences was totally alien. He felt that the game started to feel like a major project after a few meetings. Sorrell admitted in a retrospective interview that Medieval presented a mountain of challenges, since they, as many other developers at the time, were new to 3D gaming. He also admitted that some members of the team spent long nights without sleeping in order to finish the game on time. He described it as a huge learning project for the team. During development, the Cambridge team played beta versions of successful platformers such as Super Mario 64 and Crash Bandicoot which helped them understand how they might solve some challenges in building a 3D action game for the first time. Sony requested that Medieval should support the PlayStation Analog Controller, which Sorel described as a particularly fortuitous event, as it allowed them to capture much more fluidity and intuitiveness within the game. New concepts such as camera and character control presented many drawbacks and required the team to try out a number of approaches before settling on solutions that seemed to work. The team finally settled on the concept that Medieval would support both analog and digital camera-related controls for balance reasons. Sorel stated that a spline camera view was the first attempt, but he disliked it due to the lack of freedom for the player to feel as if he was exploring. It was then changed to a free-form camera view, which just worked. There were also many levels and ideas from the original concept that the team were forced to remove due to time or budget constraints. There was intended to be a platform-oriented section of the game where the player would control the worm that lived in Daniel's skull. Concept art and a separate level was created for this section, but it never materialized into the game. Humor drove the game forward for Sony Cambridge Studio. Jokes were reflections on how the team operated. Sorel explained that the humor was a happy accident, and that he used it only when he thought it appropriate. Wilson said that the team were youthful and silly, and they liked horror films and comedy. He thought the humor was a natural extension of our personalities.
Topic music The original soundtrack of the game was composed by Paul Arnold and Andrew Barnabas, the musical duo more commonly known as Bob and Barn. SCE Cambridge instructed them to compose a Danny Elfman-influenced score, similar to those of Beetlejuice, The Nightmare Before Christmas and Batman Returns. The music was created using electronic synthesizers to simulate an entire orchestra and organ. The 2005 PlayStation Portable Reimagining Medieval Resurrection used parts of the Medieval score, along with original elements composed by Bob and Barn that was performed by a live orchestra and choir. An album was made from this music, and signed copies can be purchased from the artist's website. Topic. Marketing and release Sorel explained that, during the marketing campaign, the team were frequently asked to go to graveyards for photo shoots. These usually went without incident, but on one occasion a vicar asked them why they were filming on church property. They lied by telling him that they were students filming a documentary on churches. Marketing campaigns also incorporated Sony Cambridge Studios humor. Medieval was first released in North America and Europe in October 1998. The Japanese version, titled Medieval, Yomigeta Galomir no Yusha, was released on 17 June 1999. The character of Fortesque proved unpopular there, because they considered the idea of a skeleton being the protagonist strange. The game was later released with C12, Final Resistance in a two-disc pack on 9 May 2003. It was also re-released on the PlayStation Network in 2007. In 2011, Medieval was ported to Android, although it is only compatible with PlayStation-certified devices such as the Sony Xperia Play. Topic reception The game received positive reviews from critics upon release. It received an aggregate score of 80% from game rankings and was mostly praised for its Halloween-influenced atmosphere by many critics. IGN's Chris Roper praised the game's sense of humor and unique presentation, but was skeptical about the game's sloppy controls and disjointed level designs, noting that the game's graphics did not age well over time as compared to the PSP remake which offered superior graphics and gameplay. Game Revolution similarly praised the humor but criticized the game for being too straightforward and easy to master, noting that the graphics and gameplay were slightly inferior to that of Banjo-Kazooie. Edge's reviewer believed the game as well-crafted in some respects, underdeveloped in others. The ingenious feel was praised, but many levels were felt to be simple cases of maze navigation. The reviewer of computer and video games criticized the game's repetitiveness, but said it looks nice and plays okay. The reviewer of Next Generation liked the dark humor, but complained about the camera, saying it does not smoothly keep up with the character. The conclusion was that Medieval merely repeated what had already been done. Joystick's reviewer thought that Medieval would be a new whim for players, the music and atmosphere were the mostly praised aspects of the game. Many reviewers compared the visuals to be similar to Tim Burton's The Nightmare Before Christmas. Joe Fielder of GameSpot credited Medieval for its original look and number of unique puzzles, but criticized the camera work, summarizing that a tighter camera control would have been a necessity. Randy Nelson of IGN considered the game to be a homage to Capcom's Ghosts and Goblins, stating that the game took too many inspirations from others and not enough innovation was put into it to make it unique. Nelson praised the environment of the game but considered the gameplay to be best suited for a mindless hack and slash romp. The Android version was described as rather expensive by Damian McFerrin of Know Your Mobile, but he praised the humor and the amount of content, which he said made the game stand out from other 3D action games on Android. Topic: <laughs> Sales. The game has been re-released as a PlayStation Platinum title in 1999, meaning it sold at least 400,000 copies in Europe. Topic: <remastered>, Remastered versions. On October 22, 2018, a picture was leaked online of a cover for Medieval Skeletal Collection which would consist of remastered versions of Medieval and Medieval 2, with a trailer being released nine days later on October 31st. <laughs> <laughs> Notes <laughs>